वेलकम टू यू टू फिजिक्स क्लास फ्रेंड्स इन दिस इयर वी हैव टोटल फोर्टीन चैप्टर्स इंक्लूडिंग टेन यूनिट्स इन द फर्स्ट यूनिट वी हैव टू चैप्टर्स द फर्स्ट यूनिट नेम इज इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स द वर्ड इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स इज मेनली कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ टू वर्ड्स फर्स्ट वर्ड इज इलेक्ट्रॉन second word is statics the word electron itself in this chapter is termed as charge plus static means at rest that means charges are there they are at rest when charges are at rest we are studying their behavior that is electrostatics is a branch of physics which deals with the study of the charges at rest then what we are studying we are studying the forces produced by the charges field produced by the charges potential acquired by the charges when they are at rest to understand this topic in in detail let us recall one of the finest funniest game of our childhood we used to take a scale and we used to rub to our dry hair and this rubbed scale when it is brought brought near to the piece of paper the piece of paper used to adjust to this surface of the scale the question comes here this scale is not a magnet piece of paper is not a magnetic materials but why they are attracting each other for this answer is electrostatics to understand the history of this electrostatics let us start with the introduction in greek there was a philosopher physicist as well as a mathematician by name called Tales of Miletus, around 600 BC, conducted one simple experiment, and that is considered as a historical experiment of that era. He took two simple objects, namely amber, a kind of wood, and silk or wool. When he rubbed the amber with the silk, after rubbing both. the amber and the silk or the wool they used to attract question is why they are attracting similarly if we rub comb or plastic glass rod with silk cats fur they attract each other why they are attracting so now answer is again the electrostatics even the word electricity is also derived from the word called electron and the electron in english and in greek it is called as amber now let us study what exactly happening with the charge and its behavior at the rest what is charge charge is a physical quantity of a matter which causes it to experience an electric force when placed near other matter question is what it is experiencing here i can underline the word called experience i said charge experiences an electric force how it experiences the electric force that we can study in detail here step by step but before going in detail the heading called charge let me explain few more points related to the charge charge is denoted by capital q or small q and charge is a scalar quantity charge is a scalar quantity the si unit of charge is coulomb capital c or you can write 
coulomb c o u l o m b coulomb and the dimensional formula the dimensional formula is a t and here time seconds then here i said charge is a physical quantity of a matter which causes it to experience an electric force when placed near other matter what it experiences now if we take an example of magnets if two magnets are there and we are already you know the forces put with them they attract each other if i change the polarity or the direction they repel each other then basically we have as this topic is concerned electric forces that is attraction and the repulsion both the forces that is attractive force and repulsive force is works good for the charges let's check out let me have the glass rod which is hang to a hook here i have a glass say glass 1 near to this glass 1 i will bring another glass say glass 2 glass 2 after that bring the glass will acquire positive charge glass 2 also acquires positive charge when they are brought closer and closer the hand glass one deflects away from the glass two i repeat when glass one and glass two brought closer and closer glass one which is hand will deflect away from the glass two in the second case suppose if i bring a seat or the amber or the amber near to this is amber 1 this is amber 2 amber 2 after rubbing amber 1 acquires negative charge amber 2 also acquires negative charge suppose if i bring the rubbed amber 1 and rubber amber 2 closer and closer and closer whatever the phenomenon i observed in place of glass 1 glass 2 same deflection shown by this two objects also that is amber 1 deflects away from the amber 2 one thing we should note here that or notice here that both the rubbed objects are same kind glass glass amber amber let us reverse the phenomenon suppose if i bring suppose if i bring if this is the glass glass which is having near to this if i bring a silk which is rubbed so this is a silk so now as we know that from a previous knowledge glass acquires positive charge silk acquires negative charge both are rubbed again suppose if i bring a rubbed silk near to the rubbed glass closer and closer exactly they show the opposite deflection what they are shown earlier hence the glass deflects towards the silk here clearly we can notice we can observe that the rubbed object of same kind glass glass amber amber deflects away that means they repel but opposite kind that is glass silk or silk glass they deflect towards that means what they attract each other with this mathematical notation we can notice that how many types of charges are there so in nature 
So we can clearly write there are two types of charges. Two types of charges. So now two types of charges, namely positive charge and another one is negative charge. Negative charge. Let us apply our experimental observations to this two types of charges. Before applying, we said that there are two types of charges, namely positive charge and negative charge. Who named them? One of the American scientists by name called Benjamin Franklin, who worked on lightning, named them as positive charge and negative charge. Let us apply our experimental observations to this positive and negative charges. In the previous topic we studied that charges are denoted by Q and now we came to know that there are two types of charges. Let us apply our observations to this charges. Let me take plus Q plus Q minus Q minus Q. If you look at this polarity of the charges, plus plus minus minus, that means both are having same polarity, such type of charges are called as same kind, same kind or like, both the charges are named as same kind of charges or like charges. If you recall the previous observation, glass used to repel glass, amber used to repel another amber. Here, instead of amber glass, let us specify this, plus Q, plus Q, minus Q, minus Q. Both are having same polarity, hence they repel each other. Hence they repel each other. Only we can say that like charges repel each other or charges of same kind repel each other. Let us take another concept that means by taking positive charge with a negative charge or negative charge with a positive charge. If I take these two charges Observe the polarity of the charges. One is associated with a positive polarity, another with a negative polarity. In other case, in a negative polarity, positive polarity. That means glass, silk, that kind. So that means what? Both are not same. Hence, we can say that these are opposite kind. These are opposite or also called as unlike charges. If unlike charges are there, as seen in our previous explanation, glass used to deflect towards the silk. Glass used to deflect towards the silk or silk used to deflect towards the glass. Hence, they attract each other. Hence, they attract each other. With this explanation, we can conclude that there are two types of charges, namely positive charge and negative charge. The charges of same kind repel each other. The charges of opposite kind attract each other. Or the char like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other. So now here we have introduced the topic electrostatics, we studied the example, we studied the electric charges and we studied some properties of the electric charges too. But question is how to detect these charges? To detect these charges, a device is required. So now we are taking 
uh, help of an uh, electroscope to detect the presence and the nature of the electric charges that is called as gold leaf electroscope. Gold leaf electroscope, in short, it is called as GLE. Gold leaf electroscope is a device which is used to detect the presence of electric charges on a charged body. Then, how we are going to detect? That means what? The gold leaf is consisting of two thin foils of gold called as gold leaves. In that, if it is, if the gold leaf electroscope is uncharged, uncharged, near to this uncharged gold leaf electroscope, if we bring any charged object near to it, but not in contact, that means the leaves will diverge. Leaves will diverge. Divergence of the leaves indicates that there are like, type, like charges are there. Suppose if we have gold leaf electroscope which is charged one, which is charged one, in this case the both the leaves instead of diverging they converge. Convergence is the proof, proof for the uh, unlike charges. Thank you. Now the next concept is how exactly these charges will be originated in a body. Before that, let us understand the concept of the matters. We have three types of matter, solid state, liquid state and the gaseous state. So let us take an example of solid state in that metal conductors. In case of metal, let me take an example of sodium and chlorine metals. Sodium having 11 electrons in it and chlorine is having 17 electrons in it. If sodium having 11, 11 electrons in it, in it means it is having 11 electrons and 11 protons. Similarly, chlorine also having 17 electrons and 17 protons and if I write the electronic configuration of sodium it goes like this 1s2 2s2 2p6 and 3s1 similarly if I write the electronic configuration of chlorine it goes 1s2 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 and 3p5. Look at this. In metals, some electrons are loosely bound at the outermost orbit of the atom. If I take sodium and chlorine, the last valence orbit, that is 3s1, is loosely bound. And if sodium loses one electron of it, it will attain the noble gas configuration. Similarly, chlorine is also consisting of 17 electrons. In this 17 electrons, suppose if it takes only one electron to it, if it gain one electron to it, it will also attain the noble gas configuration. But this losing and gaining process will be done in a proper manner. Suppose, if one electron from sodium jumps from chlorine, then chlorine now consisting of chlorine consisting of 18 electrons and 17 protons. There is no change in the number of protons. Similarly, if one electron jumps from sodium to chlorine, then sodium is now consisting of 10 electrons and 11 protons. As we know that the polarity of the electron is negative, 
the polarity of the proton is positive. If we take the first case of sodium, sodium is now after losing one electron, I repeat, after losing one electron from its outermost orbit, now it is more with protons, less with electrons. That means 11 protons are there, only 10 electrons are there. That means one extra excess proton is there. That means now it is rich with the protons, not with electrons, hence it becomes sodium plus, Na plus. Only one electron is lost. Similarly, if you come to chlorine, in the chlor chlorine, after gaining one electron from its neighbor metal, that is sodium, now the chlorine is rich with electrons, but poor with protons. That means 18 electrons are there, 17 protons are there. Then even if you compare both objects, that is both protons and electrons, so 17 and 17 will nullify, but one electron is extra, hence it attains Cl minus. See, we can identify the polarity of the charges, Na plus and Cl minus. In this way, the charges will be originated in the electric uh, metallic conductors. Now let's go to the next topic called as conductors and insulators. So, from our childhood, we started learning about the conductors and the insulators. What are the conductors? What are the insulators? Conductors are the material, materials which are allowing the complete flow of electric charges through it. Examples are copper, aluminium, aluminium, iron, etc. Right? These are the some examples for the conductors. That means complete flow of charges through it takes place. So, such type of material materials are called as conductors. Example, copper, aluminium, iron, etc. You can write anyone. Then, insulators. Insulators are not at all allowing any flow of charges through it. We can call that examples are plastic, rubber, wood, etc. Some of the examples. Now, let us go to the next topic called as methods of charging. What is exactly the meaning of methods uh, charging? Charging means take a neutral body. Neutral body means a neutral body consisting of equal number of equal number of positive and negative charges. That means if, if body is said to be a neutral, that means that body should contain equal number of positive and negative charges. Then, either by removing the charges or by adding the charges, we can charge a body or you can say electrify the body. So, it is also called as, methods of charging process is also called as electrification. Charging method is also called as electrification. Based on the procedure, we have classified charging methods into three types. Namely, number one, charging by conduction. Second one, charging by friction. Third one, charging by induction, charging by induction. So, in the electrification, we have three methods, charging by conduction, charging by friction and charging by induction. If you look at the first two process, here, say, word friction itself is there. That means, one body is there, another body is there, they are in contact, then there is a friction. That means both the bodies are in contact. In the conduction process also, the charged body and the neutral body both are in contact. So that means what? In case of conduction and friction, there is a physical contact. There is a physical contact between the charged body and the neutral body. But in case of charging by induction, there is a no physical contact. No physical 
contact no physical contact so in our next video we will discuss charging by induction which is there for our syllabi thank you